Today we're talking about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. That is because if you don't have the proper footwork in your swing, your golf game will feel, feel a lot of agony and you'll rarely taste the thrill of victory. So we're talking about footwork. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. And hey, if you uh, are joining me for the first time, consider subscribing. Uh, I talk a lot about tee shots, getting longer, straighter, uh, more efficient, more power for less effort. Uh, that's kind of my forte. Uh, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button and um, hopefully watching a few more of my videos. Okay, let's talk, start talking about footwork. Um, footwork is really, really critical not only to get farther down the fairway, which we all want, but to be straighter and consistent, uh, in balance. So good footwork is really one of the fundamentals of just being a good golfer overall. Um, people with bad footwork, uh, tend, it tends to lead to some really bad habits. And I'm gonna talk about a few of those coming up too. Okay, so first let's talk about uh, the left foot, what the left foot does um, first during the backswing. So first during the backswing, I'll show you from this angle first. And I'm going to show you the footwork and slow-mo from a whole bunch of different angles. So be patient, but I'm, we're just going to cover the basics right now. So the left foot is going to have two actions in the backswing. Number one, yes, it needs to lift or plantar flex. What I'm doing here is I'm combining it with the left knee, how I am flexing the knee until I feel my heel start to need to lift. So from this angle, like this, from this angle, like this, just a plantar flexion or stepping up off the heel, unweighting the heel. The second move is an in-roll of the foot. See, if I isolate it, it's just an roll to the pressure to the inside of the foot. And then if we combine the two ideas, we get this. See, the effect that it has on the knee is it brings it to the center and it really helps promote a great weight shift to the right side uh, during the backswing for more power. However, bending at the ankle like this, where we're rolling in and lifting also helps as you'll see from this angle, it helps to drop the left side under during the backswing to keep your body on the wheel or the plane that we're after, just like that. So it's not just for power and shifting to the right side, but also to set up the proper plane, help you get a straight club path and hit the ball straight. Okay, let's take a look at the right foot now. The right foot is one of the most common things to mess up for the golfers that I teach. Um, it needs to be right on because of the chain reaction that the footwork causes all the way up the rest of the right side of the body. So you've really got to get this right to have a high amount of skill at playing golf. We're going to add in the same as the left foot. We're going to have a plantar flexion. This is on the way down. And we're also going to have a inside roll. So at this point, there's only one part of my shoe that's touching the turf right now. And that is the inside of the big toe on the right foot. Okay, notice that this heel, by the time I reach impact, is only coming about this high off the ground. We're not going to have it way up here. That's that's going to lead to some bad habits with the hips um, and the posture. So we really want to make it look something like that. So here I have my plantar flexion in roll of the foot. There's one more little detail that's super critical. And I want to show you from this front angle. If I'm on a, my foot is standing on a clock and my big toe is at 12 and my heel is at six. You see, 
I do not want my right foot to rotate counterclockwise as it comes up onto the toe. Do you see how my heel is swinging around behind? Now it's at five o'clock, four o'clock, three o'clock. That's the way that a lot of golfers will get up onto their toe and it really is a complete disaster because number one, it's going to lead to you hanging back. You simply can't pivot into your left post when your right foot is turning backwards like this. A lot of uh, ex-baseball players will do this and their ability, their attempt to squish the bug. Um, but instead of going counterclockwise, we're going to make the heel rotate to 630 clockwise a half an hour. You can see from camera perspective now, from your perspective, that my heel is now in front of my big toe slightly. What this helps with, it helps with the ability for the hips to get posted up properly. And without it, it's nearly impossible to get your hips to post up and turn on the angle that we want. When the heel swings around to the back side like this, the effect that it tends to have is it tends to throw the right shoulder over the top high. And that's going to cause you to be out to in and swing downwards on your driver. You'll never get the height and distance off the tee that you're going to need to hit it out there. What you can do to work on this is you can do the simple drills to break it down. Just practice in rolling at home. You could even stand in an elevator or the line at the grocery store and just practice rolling your feet, your feet in like this. And then the second drill is just a simple walking in place. I'll do it from this angle. Walk, 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 walk. Notice how I'm flexing my knees as my heel comes up. Almost the cause of the heels coming up. So together that would be here and here, here and here. Notice in both cases how my heel is out ahead of my big toe. When you take a look at the great, I call it my Mount Rushmore, of golfers of all time. Um, to me, it's Nicholas, Woods, Hogan, Sneed, in that order. That's my Mount Rushmore. <laughs> if you have a different um, different top four, hey, leave it in the in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you're, how you vary from me. Because, um, of course, it's totally subjective. But if you look at all four of those golfers, for sure, Nicholas, Hogan, and I'm going to put up a photo here of Nicholas and Hogan side by side so you can see their footwork is exactly like I'm describing here. Um, Sneed is the same way. Tiger recently switched to the same footwork because it's easier on his back, I think. And I think that's why he stumbled onto it or it was suggested to him to do it a different way because it takes some of the stress off the lower back as he goes through the ball. So now all four of the greatest golfers of all time are all moving their back foot just like that. It controls the position of the knee, the height of the right hip, the height of the right shoulder, enables you to wheel through on the proper plane with the, the torso, the proper wheel. Um, so it's this huge chain reaction that happens with good footwork. So I've showed you how this is one of the bad things you can do that really sends, sets you up for an over the top. Even some pros do it. It's interesting. Um, another one of the death moves that some people fall into, you, you're a really poor golfer if you allow yourself to let the pressure get to the outside of your right foot as you're taking the club back. There's, there's no way back from here. If you get any weight on the outside of this right foot, um, hard way back from here for any kind of a skill at all. Um, instead, what you'd like to do is feel like the weight never gets outside the top of your foot. So you have to kind of as you wind into it, you have to kind of resist by kind of turning this thigh inwards a little bit and you kind of resist. So here, although you see I've made a full Austin backswing pivot like for a long drive, and I've, I've put my hip way outside my ankle. You see, because I am resisting inwards with this thigh, 
using the muscles in here, my weight is actually, my pressure is actually has not gotten to the outside even one ounce. I'm not letting it ever get past the midline there. Um, so that's another really important point. Okay, I'd love to hit a few for you now. I'm going to try to get the camera at different angles and a little clo more close up on the feet so you can see how they're operating and then we'll wrap it up afterwards. Okay, hopefully by studying those uh, various angles in slow-mo, it'll help illuminate, um, further illuminate what your feet should be doing during a swing. Um, if you were really paying attention, you probably caught a couple of things, uh, important factors in the right foot as you're going through imp impact. But if not, I'm gonna tell you about them now. So number one, you probably noticed Sure, I end up pretty much up on my tippy toes of my right foot at the end of the swing. But I don't get there directly. Directly would just be like this. Again, the heel would have to go behind this way. And I don't advocate doing it that way. I get to this position through the impact zone, going through impact, this classic position. And then as I complete the turn and start to straighten up again, that's when the foot goes into this classic finish position. So it's a little bit of a one-two that you've got to work on. Really just focus on this part if you don't have it already. Uh, if you were really sharp as well, paying attention, you probably noticed that my right foot kind of relocated as I went through the ball in uh, what Mike's, Mike Austin would call the foot drag, okay? So as I, I shift so completely over onto my left heel, my, and all my body weight is basically on my left foot at this point, even though I'm, my head's still in the middle, that my right leg and my right foot become essentially weightless. And almost from the momentum, they almost drag. I think in my case, the, the swings you were looking at in slow-mo there, you kind of saw it just relocate rather than drag. But It'll just drag weightlessly. And this is very similar to what a discus thrower would do. They would allow their right hip and their right side to keep unwinding through the shot to keep up with the turning left. And that's going to allow you, in my opinion, to um, get rid of some of the uh, dangerous forces acting on your lower spine when you're able to completely release that right foot um, let me show you from this angle because it's a very, very uh, particular shape. See what I'm essentially doing here is I'm walking or dragging a little bit of a semicircle around my left foot. So it's not, it's not a linear, certainly not a, a backwards like a Greg Norman might used to have. It's not at the other foot, it's out and around like it's, like it's dragging or dancing in a in a circle or an arc around the left foot. I advocate doing both of those moves and the right foot going through. Uh, it, all of this does take quite a bit of practice. Um, as usual, the way I recommend practicing is just the basic footwork drills every day, just back and forth like this. Doesn't take a lot of sweat to do this. 
And then you could even do some easy practice swinging with a wedge at home where you practice stepping over and allowing this foot to roll in and even drag a little bit, drag a little bit, just like that. Um, but overall, better footwork for you and paying attention to detail uh, is going to help your golf game greatly. If you are not in balance as you go through impact, if you're in the process of falling out of balance, either forward towards the ball or backwards away from the target, uh, you never are able to generate as much club head speed and power as you are when you're planting into the outside of the left heel. You're trying to plant as much forces down into the ground as possible with a good strong shift over. So most of your weight you could probably see if you go back and watch the replays of the slow-mo again you'll see that I my foot right at impact kind of looks like this it's kind of turned out onto the outside and all the weight is into my heel and that's really really crucial to keeping your balance through impact otherwise you'd be like trying to swing while on hockey skates uh, without that balance and, and attachment to the ground to push force into the ground and use it uh, you're just not going to get out to your maximum distance you'll you'll lose balance it'll throw your rest of your body angles off like the shoulders etc you could even do this way your weight would be in your toes if you had some kind of like early extension see my weight all going into my toes here and I'm almost falling over forward so good footwork will lead to good mechanics from the ground up uh, really crucial to have hey thanks a lot again to golf development complex Moore Park, California um, check out in the, the uh, description below for a couple of cool freebies you can get for me that will help you with your game and uh, hey thanks for watching I'll see you again soon